When Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492 and opened the door to intercontinental shipping, little did he know that something more than just goods for trading would also make its way across the oceans. Alien species would also come along for the ride. During a summer sailing trip on the Baltic Sea, two skippers noticed damage to wooden structures in the marina. What was causing this? The damage was being caused by a type of mussel known as naval shipworm that had been brought in from elsewhere. This and other species that were not native to the region, known collectively as invasive species, accumulated on the hulls of ships and boats, thus helping them to spread. This growth on the hulls is called biofouling. Biofouling can introduce new organisms from all around the world to areas where they are otherwise never found. Their extensive spread and displacement of native species is a problem. It all starts with a biofilm of bacteria that develops on the hull of the boat. This slime then provides a foundation for further growth. Within just a few weeks, algae, crabs and mollusks begin to settle on the hull. When conditions are favorable, dense growth occurs on the rudder, propeller and keel in particular. This way, tube worms, probably originated in the coastal waters of Australia, were introduced into the North Sea several years ago. The species continues to spread extensively, aided by climate change, throughout the harbors of the region. Thick growth on the rudder can even affect how boats perform. Thinking back over their journey, the skippers realized that they too had sometimes experienced difficulties maneuvering the boat. They also had to refuel more often than usual. Could these issues have something to do with biofouling? Should we perhaps get a diver to go down and clean the boat from underneath? Certainly not, objects the harbour master. The alien species would then spread throughout the harbour, attached to other boats, and thus spread even farther afield. The skippers are unsure what to do. How exactly does one go about protecting a boat from biofouling? The harbour master has the answer. Anti-fouling coatings, containing a biocide or silicon-based, can be a great help. They should be used with care, however. Over time, metals such as copper and zinc or microplastics can get into the environment and be taken up by organisms. This can then cause disruption in the ecosystem. The coating should always be customized to the boat and where and how often it is used. It is therefore extremely important to get professional advice when choosing a product. Ideally, a specialist company is commissioned to carry out the work and document exactly what was done. An anti-fouling coating is entirely unnecessary for boats that only spend short periods of time in the water, or which only sail on rivers, lakes and canals. Long periods spent idling in salt water, however, are a significant factor for increased growth. Proper boat maintenance includes short cleaning intervals. When cleaning, it is important to catch and properly dispose of all material that is removed. Conditions that are conducive to biofouling differ locally. For example, whether the boat is in salt water or fresh water, or exposure to the sun play a role in biofouling. Consulting the Biofouling Atlas published by the Federal Environment Agency can provide you with information about the biofouling pressure for some marinas in Germany. How is fouling pressure determined? Settlement plates are attached to a line and deployed at different depths, for example on floating pontoons, for the duration of one season. Regular observations are made to determine the local biofouling pressure. So what needs to be done? Boat owners need to make sure they use the right anti-fouling coating in harbors where this is necessary, or have the hull cleaned regularly. Marinas could appoint their own biofouling officer and make a suitable cleaning technology available to boat owners. We all want to protect the world's waters, and together we can. <laughs>